welcome back to my channel. I'm Kristen. This is the start of another reading vlog. I'm doing one every week for throughout the month of December. I am an expat not going home for Christmas and I know that the holidays can be lonely so this is my way of sort of making me feel like I'm connecting with more people and also if you guys are, if any of you are feeling more lonely in the holiday season and you like cozy reading vlogs, that is sort of the goal here was to connect in this way. I was just sitting down to actually film a video so I thought I would take advantage of like the setup and the lighting. I thought I would give you an update on some book stuff so I did finish The Dark Mirror the other night by Julia Marillier. So overall I enjoyed that book. It maybe hit me a little bit differently than it did when I was younger when I first would have picked picked up that book. I am actually feeling a little bit more open to reading the rest of the series. It was the the second two books actually focus on different characters and when I was originally reading this series and I picked up the second book expecting it to be about Rene and Tula, I was extremely disappointed. But I think I can go into it with slightly different expectations if I decide to reread those books as well. But that's definitely not the priority. I am reading still The Last Light of the Sun by Guy Garbo I just have my place marked out here. I'm just under halfway. At some point last night, it started to click for me. He has his ways of creating these moments where worlds and characters that you're not expecting to collide. It's always at night. He, he writes these scenes where just like, it's the middle of the night. He's obsessed with his two, the two moons in his world. It's the middle of the night and these characters who are sort of have things in common, but they're not the characters that you would think that would be connecting. And they're just kind of like raw and open and honest because it's the middle of the night and they're tired and whatever. And they have these like profound connections and interactions that shape whatever conflict it is that we're working our way up to. And it just got me again. Like he just, there's something about the way that he writes that really is so beautiful. And it's not an experience that everyone is going to like. I will try to summarize more like my thoughts on, on that later. Definitely still like, I mean, I'm at what, 258 or something like page wise. And I'm just now getting the sense where I'm like, okay, I think this is what the conflict is gonna be, but I'm up until the 200 page mark. It was sort of just still felt very like setting up all of the different characters that we're following. We, ba we basically follow every named character, right? Like at some point you're going to get any named character's point of view. And that's very much so Guy Gabriel K's writing. So even at the 200 page mark, it still felt like set up. I wasn't really sure what the conflict was or was going to be. I assumed it was going to be Vikings versus people on this island that is like now the UK. Anyway, it is starting to grow on me, or at least I'm starting to care a lot more than I did up until the 200 page mark. There was something that I wanted to read or share, just like a little blurb of like, something that I think summarizes some of the things that Guy Gabriel K does with side characters. So like I said, if a character is named, you will, it's odds of getting their perspective at some point is very high. And he does this in particular with side characters, like even random people who don't really play, no, who play a role, but they're like, it's that random guard who did this thing in any other book. Guy of Okay will like give you that person's whole story. This character isn't even important. He like delivers a message from one character to another and that's it. And then we have like a whole is it three, four pages from 167 to 172 of just summarizing the rest of his life. We just wrap it all up. And that's such a Guy Gabriel K thing to do. You might really hate it, but he started this one off by explaining sort of his idea with this, which is a big Guy Gabriel K thing. Anyway, so it says, at the margins of any tale, there are lives that come into it only for a moment, or put another way, there are those who run quickly through a story and then out along their own paths. For these figures living their own sagas, the tale they intersect is the peripheral thing, a moment in the drama of their own living and dying. So, and then it goes on to like, this guy delivers this message and then we get his whole life because like he says, Everyone is on their own path. Everyone has their own story. Everyone's doing their own life. We're focusing in on here, but the people passing through that play a minor role in this story have their own stories. And that's just, it's a, it's a beautiful, but I would suspect like not everyone's gonna like this about his writing. I am still doing audiobooks, like a mix of an audiobook and a physical book. However, the audiobook that I next had lined up was Tigana by Guy Gabriel K. And I just feel like that's too much 
gotta get real okay all at once. <laughs> so what I instead did was I looked and Scribd also has the Last Sight of the Sun on audiobook. So I've switched and when I'm out running errands or doing stuff in the morning, I'm actually listening to the Last Sight of the Sun on audiobook and then reading the physical book sort of whenever I have time to read it physically. And I got an email about The Liar's Not, an estimated delivery date. <laughs> It's not anytime soon or like it's not immediate so I got an email on I guess the 7th or the 8th saying that it's expected to be delivered on the 17th of December so I'm still waiting for the liars not it was gonna be my last anticipated release of the year like the last new release of the year that I was going to read I did have some videos planned that were sort of my like fab fine flop series where I talk about whether or not a new release from the year was a fab, was fabulous, fine, or a flop. Um, and I was going to do my second half of the year one planned for like that week because I thought I would have gotten that book and read it yet. So I had to jiggle around some of my scheduling for the channel. But anyway, I it'll it'll get here by the 17th on in and around the 17th and I'll read it then, but it means that I had to jiggle around some of my video scheduling and now film an extra video that I wasn't planning to film until later. That's where we're at. I will keep you informed. Not sure what I am going to pick up next reading wise. I've got a couple possibilities. Hi, so today is Monday. It has been one of those kind of horrible, accomplished, nothing, kind of feel like blah all day, uh, sort of a daze today. And I'm making some carrot muffins right now because I feel like I need to accomplish something today. And also I've been in a very sweet craving pastry kind of a mood lately. And so I thought I would do something where, that I at least had control over the quantity of sugar that goes in them. And that way, maybe I feel a little bit better about what I eat. <laughs> I do have to teach only one yoga class later this evening. But otherwise, my day has just felt like a total wash. I have not done any reading. I have watched a bunch of booktube videos. I feel like the only thing that I actually accomplished today up to this point is to paint my nails. So yeah, it's one of those days. I thought I would update you on where I'm at with reading. I actually have not been doing too much reading the last few days. I just haven't made a lot of progress, but I thought I would touch base since it's been a few days since I checked in. But let me get started with the muffins and I will update you. Okay, so I have still been reading The Last Light of the Sun by Guy Gabriel K, um, both the audio and the physical book, but I have not actually made that much progress, progress in the book since I last updated you, so I won't really say anything about that one. And overall, it is pretty slow from a plot perspective. It's actually a lot of characters just being really introspective and philosophizing about various elements of their lives and that just makes for a, a much slower read and something that you really have to be in the mood for.
I started reading Wildwood Dancing by Juliet Murray, which is one of her young adult series. It's actually sort of a standalone, or I've heard that it works as a standalone. So much cinnamon. But it does have a companion piece sequel. This one is set in 16th century Transylvania, which is very cool. It is folklore inspired. Yes, one and a half teaspoons. <laughs> It is folklore inspired from that region of the world, which is nice, it's new to me. I have heard that it is loosely inspired by um, the 12 princesses, but I don't know that story. So I will look it up after I finish reading to see what kind of crossover it has between the plots. There are five sisters, we follow one, the second oldest sister called Jaina, and these five sisters live in this castle in Transylvania, and when they moved in, the girls discovered that there is this sort of portal within the castle that transports them not to another world, but to the other world, like the fey world, that exists within the forest that surrounds their castle, and they basically go there every full moon. And in the first time that we go with them, uh, in the first chapter, they there are night people for the first time that the girls ever see, and this is actually vampires, but because it's written when it was, I guess it predates Bram Stoker's Dracula, and I guess maybe he was involved with coining the term vampire or something. They weren't referred to as vampires before that point, so that's why they're referred to as night people. Just interesting random fact. Anyway, it looks like one of the older sister kind of has a not a fling, but like it looks like she's really interested in one of these guys. I don't think that that is the point of this story. It seems like just sort of an offshoot. It's definitely not paranormal romance, <laughs> but there's a couple different magical components. So they keep referring to this witch, Dragushta, I think is how you would pronounce that. There is a pronunciation guide, I just am forgetting. And then the other magical component that I think is happening is that Jaina has a animal companion frog and i'm getting really strong frog prince vibes i'm not sure if that is 100 percent gonna happen i'm just guessing but basically the frog can talk to jaina in her head like she can understand what he's thinking and says to her and she just talks to, back to him out loud and he hears and understands i'm also 99.9 .9 percent sure i know exactly who this is because in the chapter that i just finished we got a little bit of a backstory half a teaspoon of salt i will get that in there can i but otherwise i am enjoying it it is really really cute so far and i do like that it is not irish or scotland influenced. I like that there's sort of a different culture component to it and new folklore that I'm not aware of. Whew, oh my gosh. Chew. Chew. Okay. Ground ginger. It was so strong. As soon as I opened the packet, it was just like so <laughs> all in my nose. Okay. I cannot find cloves. I think that it might, if we have it, it's behind where my phone is. So I'll have to come back to that later. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Okay, that's Wildwood Dancing. Enjoying it, it's really cute. I'm 20% in. I'm getting like the, the real real world problem is going to be that their father leaves away for the leaves for the winter because he's ill and the girls are left to themselves to take care of his business and things. And it feels like there is this like sort of aggressive, pushy male cousin who lives next door who seems like he's going to be probably inserting himself in their business and become sort of a real world problem in addition to the magical ones that I'm sure will also come. Last night, uh, before bed, I was struggling a little bit to fall asleep. Like I was sleepy, but not really, really sleepy. And if you watched my goals video that I released today, actually, uh, Monday, you know that the scribed scrolling and going to bed and putting a book down before midnight is a goal of mine moving into next year. So I did do some scrib scrolling last night after midnight, but not for very long. <laughs> I did pick a random book called Our Stop and I did read a couple chapters. They were very short chapters. I was not up that late after 12. 
And I think that I'm going to DNF it. I think that's where I'm able to draw the line where maybe before, like being cognizant of this goal, I can stop myself. Whereas before I probably would have just kept reading. I like the premise. It is one of those missed opportunities sort of a thing where somebody writes in the newspaper like, oh, you looked like this and we were in this place. Um, so that's the premise and then keep missing each other, but they sometimes occasionally take the same subway train, like the tube, because it's in London. I like that premise. I think it's cute. I would be interested to see how it is executed, but I'm already really not enjoying the writing style. It is very heavy on the pop culture references, which is usually not my thing. The only time that I found that really worked for me was Beach Read by Emily Henry. But otherwise, within I think the first page and a half on my phone too, so like small quantity, all of the framing of who this main character was was through pop culture references. I think there were probably a conservative 15 pop culture references in the first page and a half, and it was it's just too much for me. I did go back and read a little bit today to see if kind of fresh morning eyes, because I was falling asleep, uh, if I liked it any better, and I do not. So I think I'm gonna be strong. I'm not gonna finish it, whereas maybe in the past I would have. So I'm gonna DNF it and be like, you know what, not for me. I'm still sort of on the hunt for romance books to fill up like a TBR list. For when I want to read romance, I do have Anna Holidays on the list, but I want to wait a little bit closer to Christmas to read that one. <sighs> I think that is everything that I wanted to update you on. I will finish, I have to grate like a bunch of carrots for these carrot muffins. So I'm gonna do that and update you again, probably in a couple days, probably only one more update before I wrap up this video. Hopefully I am a little bit further along in Wildwood Dancing and The Last Side of the Sun. Guess what arrived? So plans for the rest of the day, being put on hold, I'm gonna be jumping into this thing. Everything else that I'm reading, Throwing it aside for now. <laughs> okay, but I thought I would jump on to wrap up this reading vlog and to let you know where I'm at reading wise. So I have been reading both The Last Light of the Sun and Wildwood Dancing. I actually finished The Last Light of the Sun yesterday. I haven't said too much about what this book is about, so I will really kind of really briefly do that, but it is really hard to describe because there is not a ton of plot in this book. It is very much so just the characters all being in their heads a lot. It is written from an omniscient third person perspective though of a million different characters, but we do definitely focus in on a few. So there's sort of a, a three different focus points here, I guess, from a culture perspective. So there are the Viking inspired airlings in Vinmark, and the main person that we follow here is Burn, who is put into servitude after his father kills the second person, because I guess second second time you murder someone, that's the real cutoff. Um, but he doesn't want to stay in servitude, so at the very beginning of the book he actually steals the chieftain's horse after the chieftain dies, and he runs away to join the uh, the Jormsvik, which is like a mercenary Viking group, essentially. And then in on the UK side of things, like historically this, this kingdom, this island, we follow the, the Kingale, which uh, is uh, the western portion of the island, so it's sort of Welsh inspired. And here the main character I would say that we follow is Alun Ab Owen, and this is a young teenage boy. He is the second prince in line to a one of the provincial thrones within their culture. And additionally, we get the Anglicans, which is a kingdom within sort of the center of the island, as far as I can tell. As I said, there isn't much of an actual plot. Oh, and with the Anglicans, sort of, we, we follow the king, King Eldred, and we get his history and backstory, and we do follow or get a couple different perspectives from a couple of his kids. But without getting into spoilers, suffice it to say that sort of these three different cultures and plot lines merge and clash and we see not necessarily the fallout of that, but just basically we see how this all fits together and how more specifically our characters are dealing with this ongoing and unfolding situation. I did find that it just meandered a little bit in that like really not that much happens from a plot perspective and 
I didn't love all of the characters. I didn't even really bond or connect with, with the characters. None of these characters were written in a way that you like really, really deeply feel and connect with them. It was quite arm's length distance if you are someone who's a character reader. There is a weird fey component to this book where some of the characters were able to see the fey in the other world, but this is at this time a very, I mean, it's not, they don't use the word Christianity, but it is a, it is influenced by Christian kingdoms. The fey storyline has a weird component to it that honestly, I just didn't see the purpose. I didn't see what it added to the story other than that there was elements to it that made that internal conflict within some of the characters like that I understood, but otherwise there's a little bit of a, of a like a plot thing that I just, I, I didn't see that it was necessary. I didn't see that it added or brought anything to the story. So I was a little bit confused by that. If you are generally turned off or avoid Viking inspired books because of the pillage and plunder components, this is not that style of Viking book. We don't really witness them actually doing any significant raiding or pillaging or plundering. Sometimes it is referenced, but that is not what we see in this book. There are quite, there's actually a surprising amount of references to something called the Blood Eagle, which if you watch the HBO series, The Vikings, you know what that is? We don't actually witness it happening to any characters, although it is one time described. Like it, there is a description of what that would entail, but we don't see it enacted. But otherwise, that's not the focus of this. It's not that tra traditional like raping and pillaging and plundering. Like it's that's not what we're not seeing that. The final thing that I wanted to say about this is that I do reference occasionally on my channel that I'm working my way up to doing a where to start with Guy Guy Roll K video. I, I'm, I am like actively working towards getting that. That's why I'm doing some rereads. And I will address a lot of things with Kay's writing in that video, but I will say that there are some reviewers that find Kay's treatment of women particularly odd or like offensive. I don't generally, and I have more to say about that. I think there are some examples in his works of like the exact opposite, but I would say that this is not one of those books. The women perspectives that we get in this book feel a lot like they are observers in this world, and that is, I think, a statement in itself that at this period of time, women had to function in this way, and there are probably many who felt as frustrated as some of these characters feel about that situation. Many of the women characters that we get their perspective of, they do contribute to the story and to the falling out of everything that happens, but it generally feels like it's going through a man in which they're interacting with. And again, I think that that's part of how the world worked at this time in history, that that is the way that women could shape and change the world was by influencing powerful men in their world. But because of this, it does feel like a lot of the female characters don't really have any agency and are generally just observers in this book. So I wouldn't say that this is the best example of Kay's writing when it comes to women and female characters. But again, I think that that's the point. Like he, he's not someone who rewrites history. He's taking a time period and exploring what it would have been like at that time. And this is what it would have been like at that time for women, but I can see that some readers would really not like that. Okay, Wildwood Dancing. I am 50% and 48. I am enjoying it. It is still really cute, but I basically have gotten to the point, kind of at like the 25% mark onwards of things starting to go wrong. And they're going wrong in a way that gives you that horrible stomach ache feeling where you're just so upset about all of the things that are happening that it's uncomfortable to read through because you're so frustrated. You can see that it's gonna get worse and worse and worse and you're like, don't want to experience that. The cousin is definitely becoming a problem. It's very icky, like in what he's doing, the way that he is sort of taking over the girl's household and enforcing his male dominance on their lives. He like actually takes their money boxes away from them, like their their business money box and their personal household finance boxes. He just like takes them from them. And the whole time the main character is being like, no, I you can't do this. This is not your responsibility. This is not your money. You're not in charge of this household yet. 
I don't want you to do that. Give me our money back. Give me my keys back. And he's just like, no, don't worry about it. I'll take care of this. No, 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 it's okay. Let me help you. Let me help you. And it's like disgusting what he's doing. And that's just one example. Like he does this a bunch. He basically like enforces all of his rules and thoughts on them and uh, the rest of the girls. So there are things that are really frustrating me about the book, but it's not like the book, it's the setting and the situation that our main character is in. And I'm sure I'm not supposed to be thrilled with everything that's happening. The one thing though that is frustrating me about the main character was that there is this situation with the main character and a different night person, so like one of the night people vampire things, and he is very clearly trying to manipulate and charm her into doing something, like something specifically magical, and she can she knows, she acknowledges that, she, that he's trying to charm her and that he's trying to manipulate her, and then something happens that proves that he's not trustworthy. And all the sisters are like, what should we do about it? And the main character's like, we should do that thing he was trying to get me to do to get more information. So that doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't follow that logic. Obviously that is going to lead to problems. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. <laughs> Enjoying it, but frustrated in some regards, more so about plot choices, like, and not like the book or the writing or anything like that. Okay, that is it for what I am reading. I'm obviously going to be reading The Liar's Not next, so stay tuned in the next reading vlog for that, <laughs> for my thoughts on that, for that experience. I have been feeling much better mood-wise this week. I have been reaching out a little bit more with my family, but I also haven't been doing that many like Christmassy holiday stuff and things this year, which I think sometimes contributes a little bit more to, to really noticing when you are lonely at the holidays. Okay, that is it. Let me know how you are doing this week, especially if you also are away from home and family this holiday season. Let me know what you've been reading, how you're liking it. If you have picked up The Liars Not Yet and it was amazing, let me know down below. Or if you're going to be reading it coming up sort of soon with me, then yeah, let me know as well. And if you are someone who really likes to watch reading vlogs, I'm really curious about what components or like what it is about reading vlogs that you really, really like. Cause I tend to watch reading vlogs only at certain times in my sort of like mood and like consumption of booktube. So I'm really curious what parts or like what it is about reading vlogs that you really like. Anyway, that is it for me. I will see you guys next time. Have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye.